ready action. Oh Hello, thank you for viewing my <laughs> web pages. We're always delighted to see you, to see you nice. Don't forget to tune in regularly and the subscribe button and we'll give you the bell later, not just yet. And then uh, and some fantastic videos coming up. This one is if we can stop giggling, it's from uh, it's from NBC. Uh, that's a national network in, in the in the states, and it's a program called The Other Side. Mary did three programs from The Other Side, and this one is called Raised from the Dead. That's Raised what they're from the dead. And uh, it's for it's from a lady called Kelly. No no last names for Kelly. Just to say that she lives in Encinitas and she's been a great supporter of, of Mary Malone. She's fantastic. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, Mary's web pages are www.marymalone.com or you can email Mary at M Vickers, that's M V I C K E R S 44 at hotmail.co.uk. And don't forget, subscribe and press that bell, Mary. Look out for Kelly. <laughs> okay, bye bye. That's a wrap. We're going to move on to our next guest now. You know, billions of dollars are spent annually to find cures for terminal illnesses, but progress is slow and people who are dying sometimes can't afford to wait. Ken Michael's family widened their search outside the medical mainstream and found a spiritual healer, Mary Malone. Thank you both for coming. Please welcome them. Thanks for coming. Ken, take us back. This is fairly recent. Take us back 11 months ago. Why were you in the hospital? I had a liver disease, and it was uh, chronic uh, hepatitis C, what they call it. And I was diagnosed of having this from 30 years ago. Uh, the uh, problem was, is I was in an accident 30 years ago. I had a blood transfusion. The bad blood that I got was not screened in those days. It turned to be bad blood, went dormant in my system, and 30 years later I come out and I have hepatitis. Your prognosis was? Pretty well death. Yeah. About dying. And how long, and you lapsed into a coma though, because of what? Uh, I went into the coma uh, because of, uh, I had uh, perconitis is what they call it, which is a virus, and then I went into single and double pneumonia after that for 28 days and then after that I had herpes on the lungs so I had three viruses before I even started with the transplant so you were waiting for the transplant and you came down yeah. with these three viruses and they put you in a coma for how long Ken? Uh, 28 days I think it was. do you remember having any <coughs> dreams or feelings like we have been talking about today uh, the only thing I can remember uh, was I didn't see anything like a lot of people say clouds and, and, and bright lights and I, I never did remember seeing any of this. The only thing I can say is I had uh, a warm solution, a bathing experience or whatever you want to call it, that was in that bed from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. And I think I know the reason for that warm solution. She is sitting next to you. I introduced her earlier, Mary Malone. Ken's wife, Betty, contacted you. You are That's a healer. Right. And by yeah. the way, Mary can empathize with people who have been in comas because when she was a child during an appendicitis attack, you lapsed into a coma for three days. Right. So, but since then, you've become a healer. All my healing is done with the power of prayer, and I'm only the instrument. So I left it in the hands of God, and the healing guides from heaven to help me. So how do you so do this, Mary? What do you physically I do? I do it with my over. Them. I don't touch anybody. I do it with my hands over them. And I was doing the Divine Mercy. Halfway through the Divine Mercy, I said, Ken, if you can hear me, in, if, no, I said, if you can feel the heat, blink your eyes three times. And he blinked his eyes three times. I then realized he could hear. I finished with, with that part of the prayer, and I went, and I had done the rosary. And when I was very near the end of the rosary, I said, Ken, if you can <coughs> feel heat, squeeze my hand. And he squeezed my hand. And I realized, of course, that somehow he was going to come out of this. And the heat that you were feeling was from Mary's hands. 
and it was her, I guess, healing powers coming over you. Yes, ma'am. This is your wife, Betty, and it was because of you that Mary went to see Ken. Mm -hmm. You had all the confidence in the world in her, didn't you? Oh, yes. Yes, she's wonderful. Um, we had been to her prior, and she had always said that there, she never saw death with Ken. And when he got worse in the hospital, he had uh, pneumonia and failing liver, he was going to die. And I went to her, and I said, they said he's going to die. And I took a photo of him thinking she could do a healing from his photo, and she says, I have to go to the hospital. How long after Mary went to the hospital did you see an improvement in he Ken's was, condition? The next day his numbers improved. The next day? The next day he was hooked up to all kinds of machines and breathing tube and they watched his numbers daily. And his numbers started improving and by Friday uh, he was um, much improved and the doctor said it was a miracle. They did not understand why he got better so fast. And how soon after the very first visit did he come out of the coma? Uh, he started coming out right away. Wow. His eyes open, but it was about a week after that he finally got out of bed. Wow. Well, good call. Yeah. You made a good call, Betty. That's great. Well, welcome back, Ken. Thank you. Yeah. It's glad to be back. Well, why do people who nearly die return with incredible gifts they never possessed before? We'll talk about that when we come back. <laughs> I definitely saw an angel in ICU when I broke my neck, a, a very uh, Asian-looking man who looked at me and said, don't worry, everything's going to be all right.